10, 9, 8. Go for main engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, while the uh, engine mount's drying, I'm going to work on the recovery system a little bit. And this is the original rubber uh, shock cord. reason I don't like this stuff is it works okay, but the problem is is that when you get this near heat, it doesn't really hurt it. But when it stretches, especially when the ejection charge goes off and the nose cone pulls this tight, when you stretch this out and put it near a flame, it, pow, it breaks instantly. So to keep that from happening, I'm using this braid. This is quarter inch braid, which is the same size as this shock cord. And I'm going to just take it and I'm going to measure this has actually individual little rubber uh, stringers in there inside the fiber, so it makes it uh, uh, still stretchy, but it's protected by that fabric, so it won't uh, break during the heat uh, phase of the ejection. So I'm just going to take this, I'm going to get it the same exact length. The length that they give you is pretty long, but that is correct, because uh, you want the length to be able to go out of the rocket when it goes off like a shotgun. And uh, this distance will give you a little bit of time for that uh, ejection charge to dissipate and uh, slow down, basically, so it doesn't break the cord. So you do want a long shock cord. Some people even go even longer than what they give you. Uh, it just depends on how easily it is going to be to stick it in the rocket and wrap it all up. So we're going to go with the length to there. Just for good measure, I always give it a, an extra inch. So now we can uh, put this in the parts box for emergency uses. And this is now our shock cord. And one of the things I want to do is I want to uh, make sure that the ends of it don't fray. And being nylon, we can melt that nylon and uh, keep them from fraying. So what we'll do is we'll take a candle because that's a safe way to do it. So I'm trying to do this with a uh, lighter in one hand and the other piece in the other hand. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, you can kind of see it's frayed. Uh, let me see if I can get a little close up, closer up um, it here. You can see it's quite a bit frayed. So what we're going to do, we're going to get it close to the flame, not in the flame. You don't want to ignite this stuff, but you just want to melt it. So we're going to move it towards the flame and you'll see it start to curl under. And that closes up the uh, fibers. Let's do the other end, which is really frayed. See how bad that one is? So I'll show you what happens here. See? They just melt up and they make a little cauterized end. So and always be careful when using a flame. Okay, so now we've got the uh, shock cord where we <coughs> want the length. Take the instructions. We're going to cut out the shock cord mount. Uh, some people like to mount these back to the uh, engine mount, but usually this works pretty well. So now that we know we've used that other part of the other side of the instructions, and I'm not worried about cutting this up for information like the uh, fin alignment piece did. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. We are going to take this and cut along the lines. So make sure you don't accidentally cut into it uh, and make a kind of a nick in it. You'll have to cut that out or redo one of these because you don't want any kind of tear starting on these to begin with. So. Okay, so now we've got that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lay the shock cord in here. And we're actually going to put it on the number two spot where we're going to have some glue. And then we're going to fold it over and then fold it over again. And that's exactly what the instructions are talking about. And uh, so what we'll do, using the tight bond, I'm going to make sure I got a even coat all along the 
paper there. Okay. <coughs> and I'm going to put the shock cord into that glue on the number two spot there. You can put it up in the number three spot, it doesn't really hurt it at all. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, oh, actually the instructions show it from the other direction. So just for fun, let's do it like the directions say. Okay, so it's actually, we do number two from this side. Okay, that'll give us a little more of something to, to wrap around. So now we're going to move number one here. We're going to fold that over. I'm trying to get it as straight as possible. We're going to push it down, and then I'm going to kind of push on the edges of that shock cord just so it... Make sure it lies perfectly flat. You don't want any of this bulked out to catch something on the rocket. Okay. Now the next step is to actually take the glue and put the glue on number three. Like so. And we're going to fold it over again. Put the shock cord in there. Fold at the line. Trying to get it as straight as possible. Okay. Now we've got a little pocket for the shock cord. And I'm, again, I'm going to smash it down if I don't keep dropping it. There. Okay. And then I'm going to use my fingers to actually kind of put a cup shape in this. And that's going to uh, make it so we can fit it in the tube a little bit better. And we want this just to get tacky, and then we can install it. We don't want it to fully dry. Let's put a little more glue in there. Don't want it to fully dry, because uh, then we won't be able to get that curve in it, and it'll stick out inside the tube. And we definitely don't want that. So... Now we've got that working pretty good, and we're ready to install it in the tube. Now they tell you to install it inch and a quarter in. I always like to try to put it as far as I can. That way it does not interfere with the nose cone or anything like that. So we will take the tube, and what we're going to do is we're going to put glue on this side. And we'll smooth it out with our finger. We don't want too much because then it'll dissolve the paper and give you issues that way. So, Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger like so. That's the back for it. And I'm going to put it in the tube as far as I can. And then stick it to the tube wall. Trying to make sure that the cord does come straight out. And we're just going to feel our way into it. Just make sure everything's stuck and it's as flat as possible. Okay, so now you can kind of see the, uh, the mount in there like so. And the cord on it. And we're going to let that dry. And then uh, we'll have a nice solid shock cord. Okay, on the other end of the shock cord, what I'm going to do... So I'm going to attach this, which is a fishing swivel. It's a number four fishing swivel. And this is to make it so that you can release the nose cone and the parachute system from the rocket easily. That way you can pass the uh, parachute from rocket to rocket. Since I like to use uh, nylon parachutes, um, I don't like to buy a parachute for each rocket. It gets kind of expensive, so I use the same parachute on different rockets. So this will make it a little easier to uh, detach. And all I'm going to do... I'm just going to take this ring here. I'm going to put that nylon cord through it. Got to bend it a little bit. And give it a little bit of distance. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a double knot on it. So we'll tie it once. Pull it tight. 
and then we're going to do the double knot. Again, pull it tight. Okay, now we've got a real tight knot. We're going to place it at the end of the swivel, right there. And then just so it doesn't come unwrapped, because this stuff can get kind of slick, I'm going to take some glue, some regular carpenter's glue, and I'm going to cover the knot with glue just where it folds around itself and this will just keep it from backing off so I can put a pretty big blob on here just don't get too much on the ring and don't, don't get any on the swivel you don't want that swivel to freeze up so I'll put a little more on there Okay, we'll get it to soak into that fabric. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my fingers, put them in a little water, and then I'm just going to smooth the glue out and push it into the pieces of the knot. And when that dries, that'll actually give it a, a place where the knot will, will stop from slipping through itself. And we'll let that dry and cut off that excess, and uh, we'll have our snap swivel done. Okay, now that i got the snap swivel on, I'm going to just show you how I attach it to the uh, nose cone. And the nose cone has a little block in here since it's blow molded. They have this little thing here that has to be cut out. Now just be careful that when you cut this out, you don't cut into this piece here because that can break. And then having the, uh, a little slice in it is going to make it break much easier. So we're just going to carefully punch that out just like that. And then now we got something to actually hook the swivel to. Just hook it like that. And close it up. Which it's, these aren't easy to close up, but that's, they're supposed to be that way, so they stay tight. And then we got that on the rocket, and then we will actually do the parachute uh, attached to that. Okay, here's the parachute here. And it's got a swivel on it already. So what we can do is when we're ready, we'll just attach this to this swivel. Now, one thing I found out, or just logically figured out, if I put this also on this hook right here on the nose cone, and it breaks, the rocket is going to separate from the nose cone, and then this parachute will separate from the nose cone. You have three pieces floating around. So what I like to do is actually take this hook and put it onto the hook that's coming off the shock cord. That way if the nose cone breaks, it just falls away and you still have a parachute that is holding the rocket. You'll still have the uh, rocket come down nice and smooth uh, without incident. But that way, uh, I showed it before on the Sasha the other way and uh, showed how to fix that on the Sasha as well, rocket. But uh, yeah, definitely don't hook it to that because that is a weak point. Hook it to the other uh, swivel. And then the other thing I'm going to do is there's a seam going down the end of, or the side of this nose cone. Now you can just leave that alone, but I want to sand it down because first of all I want the rocket to look nice, plus I want it to be more aerodynamic and all the forces are going to hit here first. So we want to make sure that that's nice and smooth for aerodynamics. So I'll go ahead and sand that down and uh, move on. Okay, on the nose cone, just to knock it down, I'm using my sanding file, and it's uh, got the coarse grit. Now make sure you rock back and forth so you don't make a flat spot. <coughs> so we're just going to sand it around like that, and then we'll go to a uh, 400 and then maybe a 600 to polish it out. Okay, now that I've got the two tubes uh, dry and uh, permanently attached, I'm going to actually try to fill and get rid of this seam between the two tubes. Now I could do the same technique for the spirals, but on this white tube it seems like the plastic coating actually covers the spiral, so I don't need to do that too much. The brown paper tube, sometimes there's a little gouge there and I can do the same technique. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with this automotive putty, and this is actually glazing putty. It does not need a hardener. Uh, you can get it at automotive stores. And works real good, dries real fast, doesn't shrink. Um, it's just kind of noxious on the smell, so beware of that well ventilated areas what you need 
And first of all, I'm going to sand this down very lightly, starting with a 220 grit sandpaper just to get knock down those edges. I don't want to go too far because I don't want to go through the uh, paper tube itself. And then I'll go to a 400 and then a, a 600 and then we'll be ready to fill. I want to get this as smooth as possible before we fill. Okay, now that i got to sand it, I'm going to blow it out with some air in that gap. Get out of all that sanding dust that I put in there because if this uh, putty gets stuck to the sanding dust, it'll just come right off. There's no adhere adhering to the tube. Okay, so now that we got that smooth, I'm going to take this putty. I'm going to shake it up a little bit. Make sure all the liquid gets with the solid on there. And you don't need much of this. Again, it smells pretty bad, so I'm just going to put some on a little piece of paper here, and I'm going to use just the tip of the toothpick to put it in there. And I'm just going to smooth it over the seam while trying to push it into the seam as well. Okay. Now, as it dries, I can also go back in and push it into the seam if I wanted to with my finger. I can just do this. And that pushes it into the seam, and then I'll go over it with another um, bit of putty. That way it uh, will be above the seam. So I'll continue that and get that ready to go. Okay, now that this putty is dry, it doesn't take very long. It starts to set up in about a half an hour. I leave it for a bit more than that, or even overnight. Now I'm going to just start sanding it with a 400 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to gently, gently sand it. That way I don't sand through the paper and uh, make sure everything stays smooth and then that way it doesn't gouge inside that seam either. Then when I'm done with that, I'll hit it with some 600 and we'll be done. Okay, now at this point I've got this all sanded down and I polished it down all the way to a 600 grit. It's nice and smooth. And the, uh, I mean, when you paint it, you'll see a little bit of this, just a tiny bit, but it's much better than it used to be. It's just very hard to sand paper to be completely smooth like plastic does. But uh, anyways, so that's filled and ready to go. I've also got my fins ready. I've done three coats of sanding sealer. You probably could use one more coat, but it's pretty plastic sounding. It's got a good plastic coat on it. Grain is pretty well filled. Um, I made sure that I took my air can and blew, blew all the dust off out of the grains especially on the, the root edge so you get it out of these pores because that's what's going to help the glue stick to glue this to the rocket so we are now ready to put the fins on the rocket okay we're now ready to put the fins on which is one of the last things we're going to be doing so I'm going to glue down the fin and this can be really light so what we're going to do is we're actually going to seal this into the pores. I'm just going to take my finger and I'm just going to rub it into the pores of the wood and kind of clean up the sides just to make sure it doesn't ooze all out. Okay, then I'm going to let this get tacky and then we'll be ready to install it here once it gets tacky. Okay, now that we've got the glue pretty tacky, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it a little more carefully. I'm going to use a toothpick here. I'm going to run the glue right along this edge. And it's okay if a little bit gets over the, the ends. A lot of it will squeeze out when we put it on the actual rocket. You don't need a lot of this. You think a lot of glue would make it make it stronger, but it doesn't. Then the glue becomes the uh, structure and not the wood. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to find our fin line, one of the fin lines on the rocket itself. Okay, just FL, and I'm going to put this on the back, and this is supposed to be flush with the back of the rocket. I'll line the line up in the middle and I'll rock this forward to the front. And this stuff actually holds pretty quick, so you got to be kind of quick about getting it centered and spaced to where you want it. OK. 
Okay. Now what I'm going to do, once I got that right where I want it, let's get the glue out of the way because that tends to get stuck to things. I've got our Estes Rocket fin aligning guide and measuring tool. And what I've done is i put some tape on it. You can use rubber bands, but rubber bands are hard to move around. On tape works better. So I'm going to move it into position, press it against the tubes. This is why I wanted to have the two tubes together. And then I'm going to press it against the fin until it stops and it's nice and tight. Then give it a little push down and then tape it in position. Okay, so that I'm going to let that dry just like that. It's going to be perfectly straight up and down. And uh, I'm going to let it dry in a vertical position like that because the glue, even after a few hours, is still soft enough that the fin could move on its own if it were put either on its side or on the other side. So, like I said, I like to try to just find somewhere safe to put it like that. Um, I don't really like putting it vertically because the glue will go towards the bottom and it will pull at the bottom, which can be an issue sometimes. But anyway, so that's uh, how we put the fins on. And then I will show you how to reinforce them once I get all the three fins on. And uh, we'll be close to finishing the rock. Okay, um, I've got the fins on and they're all glued on. They're real nice and tight. Um, one of my concerns though with this big of a fin, even though I've got it coated with the uh, sanding sealer is it is a little flexible you can see that it's got a little flex there and when it hits the ground if it doesn't hit quite right it's possible that this can snap anywhere across here so what I thought I would try this is a, a experimental thing but I bought some of this which is a carbon fiber strip very small very thin and uh, this is made by Midwest um, this size is uh, 0.034 by 1.121 by 24 and what I'm going to do is I've cut a piece using um, my cutters here I marked it and I'm going to put it it fits almost exactly on that balsa thickness so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece here and then I'm going to put a piece here to act like bumpers and to keep it from flexing so it will not flex this way you can see that it will have rigidity across there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some epoxy and I'm going to glue these on with epoxy. And I'll show you that here in just one sec. But uh, how I did the measurement is all I did was take a Sharpie marker because it's kind of hard to see on this black. And they don't have to butt up exactly to the edges. I can always sand them. And I marked a little mark on there. You can see that mark there. And then just took my cutters. Now these cutters being carbon fiber, this is hard to cut this direction. So what I did was I'll take it, I keep a grip on it, take it and put it in the cutters, and then give it a little bit of a crimp. And that's enough to get it so I can break it clean. And then I'll sand it a little bit to uh, get this little extra fiber down in position. And then, like I said, I'm going to glue them on there as little bumpers and see if that makes any difference. Couldn't hurt, right? So we'll glue those on next. 